So for our sake, let's say for our example, we chose to ultimately go with uh, $300,000 on our loan. So one of the things we can do is we have to look at how much is being applied to our interest and how much is being applied to the principal. Now, I took out a loan for $300,000, or Jarrell's restaurant did. I have to pay back $300,000, period, in the statement. But whenever I'm making payments, I'm also paying back the interest. And typically, in what we call an amortization uh, schedule, interest is applied very high initially, and it starts to taper off in the end, in the lower end, when that money is kind of moved on. So one of the things we can do is, I've already filled out all of our information, but initially I start with my remaining principal being B6. And that's because obviously I haven't paid anything back on my loan. Now when we get to interest payment, like I said, uh, in an amortization schedule, we start off by paying a high interest rate, a higher interest amount in the beginning, and that slowly starts to taper off over the life of the loan. So what we can do here is instead of focusing in on just my PMT, which is everything, I can start by going I PMT, returns the interest payment for a given period. Now, that for a given period, that's the interesting thing. Because as I open up my parentheses, notice I see four options. I see my rate like before, but this next option is per. Now, before I get too far, make sure to set this up as an absolute cell reference. Remember to hit F4 so you've got your dollar signs. Now that per, that per is actually referring to what period? Again, we said that we're going to make 20 periods across the life of this uh, loan. We're going to make 20 payments. We're talking about payment number one, numero uno. Next of how many payments. So we're 1 20th of the way there. Make sure to also make this one an absolute cell reference. C10 stays changeable. And then finally, my present value. What was the present value of the loan? Same thing, make it a absolute cell reference. What we see is the first payment we make, most of it is most of that interest is actually going to be, not most, a, a good chunk of the payment that we're doing is going to be geared towards our interest, $5,000 at, at least. So how do I find out how much am I doing to my principal? Well, just like I had an IMP, I have a PPMT. So what I can do is I can do the exact same thing, the exact same structure. My rate, make sure to absolute cell reference it. My period, which I don't cell reference, or I don't absolute in this case. My number of payments, and then my present value. And what we should see what happens is if I add these two numbers up, E10 plus F10, what I should see is the same number up here. I do, yay, everything's good. So before I just auto fill everything down, I need to adjust my remaining balance. To do this, what I can actually do is I can come up here and I can say, what was the initial balance minus, now of these, which one do you think you wanna pick? I wanna pick that one. But in reality, again, well, remember what I said, my loan is $300,000. So I have to pay off the loan, not interest. So I'm actually only, getting this guy. I'm only taking back the payment from my principal. So I'm only losing, sorry, uh, you want to add those together. You only are getting about 28.7 uh, on this first round. Now these guys, because we use the absolute cell referencing, we're able to go ahead and click and drag them down. Now one of the things I want you to focus in on is this second period. You know, this is we're only six months into the loan now all of a sudden that we're paying it back. Notice the interest is going to be a lot lower here, and it's not because this so much. It's actually, because if you notice, our principal is actually getting a little higher too. It's because we're starting to go on a downward slope. As we make payments, the interest rate goes down and our principal goes up. So as we take all of these, and if we 
scroll all the way down to R20, we're going to see the exact same thing. Over time, my interest is going to slowly drop and my principal amount is slowly rising up until I get to year 20 or payment number 20, which is my remaining principal is 17,600. My next payment is going to be that exact same amount of money. And so if I take my remaining and I add my principal, you see I should get zero dollars.